Welcome back to another episode of Sound 101. Today's episode is DIY. We're back at the workbench and we're gonna teach you how to make a shark fin antenna. This is a shark fin antenna. We've gotten rid of the brand. A lot of brands make them, but this is a UHF shark fin antenna. What we're building today is a 2.4 gigahertz shark fin antenna. But the principles of what we're doing in this demo work for this also. If you can source a blank one of these circuit boards, you can just follow along if you're doing a UHF system. How does a shark fin antenna work? Well, each one of these little slots on this board actually goes to a corresponding frequency. 2.4 gigahertz sits right in here. Little 6.5 gigahertz way up in there. Then down here is 850 megahertz. This antenna covers the whole frequency spectrum. Same thing with this big guy though. As you can see, this is from like, I think 470 up to 900. And actually you can lay this right on top and right in there is actually where the frequencies pick up. So if I were to somehow attach this, I could get like a, a full spectrum one, but you just, you don't actually want that. You want to broke them up by size. Otherwise they get too big and unwieldy. The way they work is the ones in the front are called directors. The ones in the back are called reflectors. And the frequency that you actually want to sit on is the one that you're actually going to be quote using though. You're kind of using them all at the same time. It's a mathematical equation of fractions to determine the length of every single one. It gets really complicated. There's whole videos on it. But this is a shark fin antenna that we're gonna be using today. What do you need for this build? It's simple. You need one antenna. You can buy different frequencies, whatever you need. We're gonna need some solder and a soldering iron. Also a cheap little microphone holder. What this is, we bought this for, had to be like three or $4 on AliExpress. We actually don't care about anything except for this little piece of plastic, that screw, that nut, and this little adapter. Like I said, links in the description below, but that's all we actually need for this build. I guess also a screwdriver. And this is something that you, it's a nice thing to have if you're doing this particular build, a SMA to BNC cable. But if all you have is just spare coaxial cable, you can do that too. You're gonna have to crimp whatever connector you need. If you're doing a BNC build, you're gonna wanna save this side and cut this side off. If you're doing an SMA build like we're doing, cut the BNC side off. That's what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut the BNC side completely off. And we're gonna trim back some of that wire because we need to expose the shielding and the core wire for the coax. All I'm doing here is trimming away the jacket, pulling the jacket back completely. Now, typically you'd wanna use like a wire stripper. I've said this in the past. I don't use wire strippers. I uh, use just a flush cutter because I've gotten pretty good to the point where I don't cut all the way through. I can feel at the end of the jacket and I can check, make sure I didn't cut through. Nope, I did not. So I've got my jacket. I'm gonna twist this to the side. All this shielded, I'm gonna just twist that over here. And I've got my core wire. I just need to expose a little bit of a tip. Boom, just like that. That is my core wire, that is my shielding. And when we do the soldering, the core wire goes in the center. One of these four gets the shielding. You can check on this side, all four are connected so it doesn't really matter. Your shielding will touch this side. Your conductor will touch this side. This will act as the aerial with the corresponding one acting as the ground plane. That's gonna act like a bi, uh, bipole antenna, what is, it? Uh, what is it called? A dipole, yeah. That'll create a dipole. So this is actually a dipole shark fin antenna. Kind of a cool build. It's gonna give you about a plus six dB gain so it's gonna make it so that any little weak signal it gets, it's gonna pick that up for sure and amplify it. And at the same time, it's also gonna give you a narrow field. Instead of an omnidirectional monopole antenna that picks up all the interference, this is gonna reduce some of that background interference and only pick up exactly what you are trying to aim at. First things first, before you solder, always pre tin your wire. So I'm gonna put just a little bit of solder on the tip. And that's gonna help with trying to solder it to a circuit board. Then I'm gonna pre tin just a little bit of the shielding. There we go. And we've tinned that up pretty well. I burnt my sponge last week soldering some stuff. So that seems pretty good. We like that right there. The second step is actually using a drill. We're actually gonna be drilling into this board. I've already pre done this guy, and this is the one we're gonna use for the template for the rest of this build. What you can see is I've got two zip ties four holes. We've also got a hole down here at the bottom, allowing us 
some hinge movement so we can actually get more directionality out. Today's build is gonna be a low profile build. This one actually has an SMA connector right to the circuit board and a wire with an SMA connector. This way I have SMA on both sides. If I ever, for whatever reason, wanted to cut these zip ties, I could put a much longer one. I'm not going to. So for my second one I'm gonna build, I'm just gonna go right to the board. But before I go any further, let's drill those holes because I only like to drill holes once and then I like to put the drill away. You wanna take your bit and your zip tie and you wanna make sure that they are roughly the same size so that your zip tie goes through. You don't wanna drill more than you have to. You wanna drill exactly what you need to. We've drilled out our pilot hole for this guy right here. This is for our hinge mechanism, but as you can see, I'm already running into some issues. Um, I'm gonna have to drill that hole a little bit further deeper, but also it's not the right size, so I need to scale up. And it looks like one fourth inch would actually be ideal. For so we got one last hole to drill. So that particular hole is gonna get filled with that screw, fits perfect. You'll notice though, this slot and this board, different diameters. That's not gonna work out so well. We need to fill the gap. So I've set aside over here a couple of washers that I've pulled. Nope, that's too thick now. This is gonna be a guessing game. I pulled these from my parts bin and that's the perfect diameter. And I'm gonna feed the bolt and we're gonna take our washer combo, slide this into place. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our screw and then just feed it right up. This is the fun of DIY. I does not want to play along. There we go. And as you can see, we got the nut, the bolt, all that. We got some hinge. Now, I've got a little bit of play here. If I tighten this up a little bit, it's going to hold. Still give me a little bit of bend. Let's tighten that up a little bit more. What's nice about using this setup is I've got this little guy. And that is three eighths to five eighths. I've got a five eighths inside. If I got a one fourth inch to three eighths adapter, I could add that. I could go all the way down to a one fourth inch. However I wanna mount this up, it's threaded perfectly for that. For AliExpress, $3, it's not a bad little part. I keep a couple of these spring clips anyway when I need to just savage little parts from it. I would probably never use this in the, I probably would never use this in the field because they really don't do a very good job of isolating the microphone from the stand. But as little spare parts around the shop, this is exactly what I need. I mean, his got a center mast right there going to this little BNC connector. Ours is gonna have a center mast and the wire is gonna go all the way back to our receiver. It's like a small baby one. Not a bad little build for, well, I think it's like less than 30 bucks to build one of these. So let's get back to the wire though. Now we are ready to solder. That is our weld. What you can tell is that center pin is where we solder the pin. Right there is our shielding. That's gonna go along this line. Now all that's left is for us to feed that perfect size through for our zip, back through. is we're just gonna snap that off. Again, feed it down. I like to do it the exact same way so it looks uniform. It looks very purpose-driven. If you don't do it otherwise, it looks sloppy. If some of your zip ties go one way and the other time they go the other direction, it's like, oh, why can't they just do it the right way? You wanna get it as secure as possible, then cut it off right there so it's not Super sharp. And now you have one shark fin antenna 
right down to the connector of your choice. So I can take this, go right into like a Deity Connect. I can go into other 2.4 gigahertz systems on the market. I can go all the way up to 5.8 gigahertz systems. I could plug this into a Wi-Fi router if I really need to like get some Wi-Fi on the other side of a building. It would work for that too. This would even work if you've got some of the newer UHF systems that are in the 940 system. This antenna could be a nice compact 940 megahertz shark fin antenna for you. So that is our build. At the end of the day, you can see this one that I built is black. I have not painted this one yet, but I've got two shark fin antennas for less than 50 bucks. I'll be adding these both to my cart so that in the future I have dual shark fins and if I need to point them at actors at different places in the set, I've got that as an option. And that's it. I mean, it's a real simple build, two solder points, five drill holes, a cable, circuit board that you can buy off the internet, maybe wait two weeks to receive, and some parts from AliExpress that cost all like three or $4. I mean, really, really simple, easy to do. Yeah, they're like really expensive when you buy them. When you build them, they're not expensive at all. Don't forget, leave a comment below and tell us what you think we should make our next DIY build about, or just ask us a question about some sound problems that you may be having. Hit follow, like, and subscribe on all of the social media platforms, and hit that bell for notifications on this video so you can get more videos like this in the future. We drop new videos every single Monday. I'm Andrew from DD Microphones. Thank you for watching.